Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Glad to have you this week. And lots of things happening. Thought to kind of get y'all caught up with uh, some of the things going on here in Arizona. And then some of our projects. And then I got some reports for you. So let's get started. So I have uh, just a little update about our fifth wheel and some of the repairs we're doing since we're traveling down from Washington. So some of you that have been following us a little bit, you found out back in Las Vegas, we blew a tire, which was like somebody threw a hand grenade at the side of the RV, which kind of you look at, oh Lord, we didn't have a mark in this RV. So anyway, so our fender and the little skirt got damaged. Well, <laughs> skirt's gone. I don't even know where the skirt went. Anyway, so been kind of sitting on it here for the last month and a half trying to decide what I want to do with it, but uh, I want to get it back to normal so who knows someday I might trade this thing in I don't need this crinkly looking <laughs> fender so I finally uh, at the park here they have a guy that does uh, repairs and I asked him I said hey can you handle this and he goes well if you got this and this I could I could do it I was like cool so I contacted well tried to uh, contact Keystone ended up going through a uh, distributor so I ordered the sheet metal I need and it's our, and it comes like and a 140 inch piece already and it's like I only need 73 inches so they'll cut it in half for me and then I also have the skirt which is a little um, uh, plastic thing uh, thing that goes over the top it's more cosmetic anyway that uh, so it's on the way and um, they're not the most organized people but I'm assuming my parts on its way and uh, once I get that <clears throat> then sorry I uh, will have my uh, this guy here install all this stuff and he charges like 80 bucks an hour and so I'm gonna have a good five hundred dollars into this repair but I think it'd be a lot better than if actually took it to a dealership so that's the update on that um, then also I told you we broke a tank handle uh, that was an easy fix we actually yeah uh, just went to camping world it's uh, you can actually get kind of a universal thing that you can uh, for replacement pull, uh, pull handles uh, and grabbed one install it worked just fine so it's like okay we're getting things fixed here and then finally this isn't actually a fix it's just something I was excited to see I saw my first javelina you know those wild pigs anyway so they uh, kind of cruise around here once in a while uh, but it's got to be dark. So uh, and my, my wife was running over to the office uh, to do something, and she comes running back. She says, Rob, you want to see a javelina? And I say, yeah. So we go running on out there with a flashlight, and uh, we saw three of them, but um, sometimes the little herds out here can get as high as eight. And, yeah, we're careful around them. But, you know, I'm from Washington. I just had to see one. So I've seen a javelina now, and I've seen the rattlesnakes now, and it's like it's probably more than I really want to see, but I wanted to see them. I love to get some photography of them, so I'm going to keep on my toes about opportunities to get a picture of those crazy little pigs. But anyway, that's the scoop on that. And as we hinted to you guys not too long ago, we've been kind of looking at RVs. And uh, the more I look at RVs, the more I'm starting to fall back in love with the one I already have. But <laughs> anyway, so it, the salespeople down here in Arizona are a little more aggressive, I think, than the folks up north. And so every time I get out of the car, I feel like there's just like a, a pack of wolves that want to go after you. And uh, so we've been looking at motorhomes and, and, and trying to condense things and, and just an idea. Remember, this is brainstorming. And so we kind of what caught our eye is these super C's. And the reason we like them is because they look like they're just built like a Sherman tank. I need something tough. And because uh, if we do what we want to do going north and spend a lot of time in uh, uh, Canadian provinces and Yukon territories, and plus we want to do more fishing and stuff. Um, and maybe if we even think 
even have time, we might actually think about Alaska. But that's uh, actually everything before that is actually more important to me and Sherry. So we got, but we needed a tough rig. And so uh, if we took this rig up, uh, the fifth wheel in the truck, I don't think the fifth wheel can handle that kind of abuse. But I think a Super C would. But anyway, that's just an idea. But uh, so I thought I'd just kind of tell you a little bit what it was kind of like to look at these rigs. The, the salesmen's are kind of funny because they, uh, you know, they, how much you want to spend right off the bat? And it's like, I want to spend a billion dollars just to freak them out. But it's like, no, I, I usually say, dude, I don't, I want, I don't, I want you to give one to me. <laughs> I don't want to spend any money here. So anyway, so no, after I get past being a smart aleck, um, I've been finding, uh, boy, they really like to push the gas ones because you know the prices are so much better but uh you know me i i like diesel i can trust diesel diesel will last a long time and uh so we'll see about that but um i'm i'm kind of getting a kick out of these super c's so if i do a super c uh you know good old uh, i think they're 550 um Ford chassis on them anyway they're pretty pretty awesome so we'll see but yeah it's a little different down here in the south and here's a little update about outdoor travel radio which is our 24 7 radio station internet station and um, you can find it on shoutcast or just go straight to outdoortravelradio.com and there's players right there you can use the ones on your phone. There's an app you can download. There's several ways to go listen to it. And you can find us on, you know, you can download little players on your cell phone and listen to the radio show there. Anyways, but it runs 24-7, so it's been kind of fun. Been very busy getting it all, um, the playlists all set up and getting our programs together, getting some new shows. Remember, um, what's nice about outdoor travel radio is it goes well beyond just RVing it's travel and outdoors so uh, trying to line up a few things and uh, taking some time but it's only been a week a week old so far but got our music license so that's got that over with um, we have new shows that we've already produced and put them on there and then we're also looking for content from other providers uh, that want to be on the show because uh, we are a community <clears throat> So we're reaching out to other outdoor podcasts, other radio shows, and uh, you know they're also looking for uh, content and advertising co um, companies. And so we're reaching out to new territories. So it's not just you know it's not stuff that we're familiar with. So lots of fun. But yeah, radio stations going good. We're kind of happy. The music uh, we're trying to put kind of that type of music in there it's easy listening but a little pop a little more classic rock and songs that and music that you kind of tap your foot to or actually know the words to that's the kind of station that we want to have when you have a chance give it a listen see what you think love your comments contact us tell us what kind of programs you'd like to hear on it i mean it's all kinds of stuff now we can talk about uh, hunting, fishing, caravans, um, travel, anything. So we're looking forward to it. So let us know and give it a listen and see what you think. Been reading up on a few things on the internet and saw a press release from the KOA uh, campground folks. And well, it's actually the KOA News Service. And this came out on May 10th. And so apparently um, five of their uh, resorts or parks were actually awarded perfect scores. And so apparently the Campgrounds of America Traveling Quality Assurance Teams pull into KO, KOA campgrounds each year and undertake a, ri a rigorous 600 point quality review process. And it's designed to help KOA owners and managers make improvements to their parks. So apparently, four, five of them got perfect scores. So uh, I thought I'd let you know what the five that got awarded perfect scores. The first one is 
in San Diego Metro KOA in California uh, owned and operated by uh, the Bell family the second one was Springfield Route 66 KOA Holiday uh, Holiday in Missouri and that's owned and operated by Scott and Diane King the next one was Wellington KOA Holiday in Kansas and they're owned and operated by Chad and Jody uh, Bartelson and uh, let's see Wilmington KOA Holiday in North Carolina owned by Joel and then the last one was Orlando Southeast Lake um, Whooper Mill <laughs> some of these names Whooper Mill uh, KOA uh, Florida uh, Holiday in Florida owned by Stephen Richardson so those are the five parks that got the perfect scores congratulations to them and that must that must feel pretty good when you're running a park it's got to be tough to have an RV park and meet all the standards and uh, you know you never know what people will do and, and everybody's regions are different and weather can affect your parks and good electric a good septic system so wow uh, that's a thumbs up that's a big thing so congratulations to all five of those parks so another thing I was reading from work camper news and this was uh, posted on 128.16 and it looks like it was written by Steve Anderson and so he uh, had some questions he answered so the first one was the term work camper uh, the question was what is work camping and so he answered by saying it was trademark trademarked by his company back in 1987 and the work camping is um, accomplished by individuals that live in an RV and do some form of work the big thing in this article is he's saying well work camping it doesn't mean that it's in an RV park it's any form of working part-time or full-time in or outside the RV parks the next question he addresses is what kind of work is available for work campers and he answered that a majority of the jobs are definitely through the RV parks and resorts but there's also an assortment of different jobs uh, outside or opportunities depending on people but uh, it could be amusement parks retail shops fulfillment centers uh, restaurants lodges water parks state and country parks um, forest and fish wildlife services also Christmas tree stands uh, blueberry farms and campground map ad sales and more it's not limited to large companies or small companies it could be just a mom-and-pop operation so it's all over the place so um, I guess the big part is don't have the stereotype that a work camper uh, works in the RV park that they're staying in of course the next big question everybody asked them is <laughs> question three was how much income can I earn so this is basically what they said he urged the people that are especially work campers that they need to understand that the majority of the work camping opportunities out there are not going to provide the type of compensation that will replace your your career income so this is uh, so what he means by that is that some of these places don't necessarily have a salary or hourly rate um, a wage but what they'll do is uh, many work camping opportunities out there will work for a trade for a campsite or some will have actually both a campsite and a small salary that could include some perks like Wi-Fi or your electric bill things like that too so uh, a lot of its bartering so if you're at an RV or resort and you're working for them a lot uh, the owner may just say I need an X amount of hours 20 hours a week and this is what I'll give give to you in return and there be absolutely no paycheck at all so that's kinda how it works a lot but that's not necessarily true with the outside jobs where you actually get jobs uh, supporting services now those are regular jobs however he does stay in, say in here that some places actually do offer an hourly wage and maybe some other type of comp compensation and but the, the average looks about 
twelve dollars an hour. So uh, that that sounds fair. So uh, this is actually a long article, so I'm just kind of moving along kind of quickly. Uh, and and I urge you to go check out Work Camper. They're awesome, awesome platform. So anyway, the next question he had in here was okay. After hearing trading and and twelve bucks an hour on the average, why would I want to be a work camper? His main answer was freedom of place. So that makes, I mean, if you got a place you want to go and you still need a little bit of extra income, and even if you're retired and the pension's not quite enough, the freedom to go where you want to go. So, um, so it gives you the opportunity to go where you want to do, stay as long as you like because the work camp, uh, because of your work camper income and perks. So, that's really what it's all about is um, unfortunately uh, some people have the pensions and the <laughs> extra income or good retirement funds to just go and not have to work anymore but that's not the American dream is getting kind of beat up so uh, some folks uh, if they're lucky enough to have any pension at all Social Security they having a little extra money is nice and the fact of keeping busy and socializing with the community work camper jobs are just awesome to have and of course the last question that he addresses is um where should i go to work camp and and he basically is just saying where do you like the vacation where do you want like to go that's where you should go work camp because then you can work you know the area that's one thing and two is you're not working all the time you're just working maybe 20 30 hours at the most during the week and so you also get to do the camping part go enjoy the area so he's really saying work camp in the places that you vacation and that's what it's all about so just to sum all this up is there's so much more here uh, to share with you but I urge you to get the chance go to work camper and remember when they spell that it's got a K in it so it's work camper with a K A M P I N G and get registered and, and check out their services if you're serious about wanting to do work camping and travel they have mastered the art and so uh, they're they're people we know about they're not sponsors of ours or anything like that it's just a good service so move on over there I'll leave a link down below in our description how to get there and check them out, Work Camper. So I came across some RV information that I thought was kind of interesting and, and I've heard of this before and didn't really have it to find out but I found out what qualifies as a recreational vehicle, an RV. So uh, some people think that being in an RV, uh, VW van or, or just a van, uh, that, that they're enjoying the RV world. But as, as the definition, the definition actually is made up of two categories, motorhomes and towables. The primary difference between the two is motorhomes are motorized while the towables are towed behind a primary vehicle. So they say there's basically three different types of towables uh, on the market today, which is the Type A, which is generally the largest, largest, Type B being the smallest, and Type C falling somewhere between the terms of size. Types of towable RVs are, the, are trailers, truck campers, and expandable trailers. I assume that includes our fifth wheel. So the other thing I was reading up on is also in the United States there is over 12,000 RV related businesses currently operating and generating a estimated revenue of over, and this is pretty high, 37.5 billion annually. That's a lot of dough guys. The other thing that's kind of important to know that the industry employs over a quarter of a million US workers and has a total annual payroll that exceeds an estimate of 4.9 billion dollars so that's that's good they actually say that the RV industry ranks as one of the most American industries in our field 
And the other thing I didn't know is over 60% of all recreational vehicles are made in uh, Elkhart County, Indiana, and other 15% are produced in California and Oregon. And according to, and this is a little bit older data, but according to a 2011 study from a University of Michigan, the number of American dri Americans driving RVs has reached a record number. So it's roughly about 8.9 million households now are proud owners are RVs. So it's growing, and imagine what it is now. And yes, there is a lot more younger RVers out there, but the studies found that an average owner of an RV is 48 years old, married, and an annual household income of around $62,000 a year. They also claim that a majority of RV owners own their home or choose to spend the majority of the disposable income on travel and leisure. The average RV owner will spend approximately three weeks a year in their, on the road or in their RV. So remember, we're talking in law of averages. So this was actually what I found the most interesting was, even though the popular perception of RV owners is one of retirees spending their golden years is traveling the country, the majority of RV owner, owners are actually fall between the ages 35 and 54. <laughs> so there you go, young folks. Over 11% of all households headed by individuals between these age groups own a RV, compared to 9.3% with households head, headed up with 55 or older people. So basically they're saying that probably the ones that own a home, not retired yet, yet still they have an RV so hopefully it's paid off by the time they retire and then the last thing that was kinda of interesting is where do RVers travel and in the, U in the USA over 16,000 privately and publicly owned campground sites are located nationwide with an RV park always close by Americans take the opportunity to visit this country's beautiful vistas, stunning landmarks, and scenic national parks. So there you go. The RV industry is growing. <laughs> we got plenty of places to go. <laughs> so we're probably good for a few more years. So I thought I'd share the information with you. So let's move on. <laughs> so I thought I'd take the time to update you a little bit about what Sherry and I are doing uh, on the road. Well, kind of on the road <laughs> down here in Arizona. So the kind of sum things up a little bit is Sherry took on a position down here and we're down by our grandkids so that's kind of cool and we kind of uh, settled in for a little bit and the opportunity with this particular thing that she's doing now may give her telecommuting uh, options in the future so we're kind of excited about that but we need to kind of establish that a little bit and you remember we're kind of doing that juggling of trying to keep uh, affordable health insurance so that's kind of our little hope there so that's kind of where we're at and and the same time as the smoke settles and as we're sitting here we've launched a new outdoor travel radio and we really need to sit down sit still and really hunker down and get to work on that so a lot of work involved in doing something like that so uh, it, it sounds so easy and fun but you know you have to produce material along with all the other pro projects we're doing we actually have reduced our videos a little bit <laughs> to keep up and so um, a lot of work has to go into this up front so a lot of new cuts of shows new subjects that we've never tackled before when it comes to hunting and fishing and and other things uh, not just RV related so uh, lots of research going on so being kind of in one spot is uh, allowing us to regroup a little uh, before we hit the road again when we hit the road again uh, I'm kind of excited because not only will we do RV travel but we're going to add in a little more of actually going out fishing or actually going out hunting or actually doing activities and getting them recorded is, is not only is it RV 
nice, but this is where our RV takes you. And so we want to go so much farther and, 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 and bring in a lot more material. The other thing is uh, we're kind of teaming up. Uh, Aaron Jemerson is uh, on board, kind of helping us out. We'll probably keep our eyes open for other folks that might be interested in to help us produce content. Uh, if you, if there's companies out there we want to coordinate a little bit, I already have a podcast, or maybe you're a person out there who'd like to produce a little audio show once a week, and you just want to do like 15 minutes, and you want to feature your subject, and you want to, and we have no problem you identifying yourself and identifying your um, social media that you use, as long as you are courteous and we just you know it's a nice trade and so we help you and you help us type thing so if you're interested in producing articles or producing a little audio show or even uh, little video shows that you'd like us to put on our platform just give us a holler by going either contact me directly at rob at rv talk radio and and we're talking about both shows we have rv talk radio and outdoor travel radio.com and uh, just give us a holler in both sites you can go to go to the contact page and give us a holler and see uh, See if there's something out there because we are a community and we want the community To know that this resource is available to them, too But it's a, you have to be professional and you have to set up the right you just can't Sometimes like if you're gonna make an audio it has to be an mp3 There's little rules that you have to follow but if you're serious give us a holler and we'll work with you so people have helped us and now if we can help you great of course the other thing I told you is this has also been the opportunity to it seems like about after three to four months <laughs> you have to stop and fix all fix everything so we've been kind of repairing things and organizing things a little bit too so fixing the fender will make me feel a lot better getting um, we're still kind of working on um, our slide, uh, our fix wasn't as good as we thought it was because we did it in the cold and rain up in Central Oregon. And now we're, it's dry up here, we're seeing that it wasn't that good a job. So we're redoing that. So this has been a great opportunity to uh, work on things. But at the same time, having your rig just sitting here in some very hot weather is uh, uh, worrisome to me a little bit. So uh, hot weather, and uh, is I feel it can be just as damaging as freezing temperatures and, and or, or really rainy weather so it just seems like all the different elements have their issues and of course we're fighting uh, the sugar ant battle that we keep joking about and uh, we're you know I told you in the last show that we moved everything to using containers if by cereal we put it in a container you buy uh, spaghetti noodles you put that in a container nothing is in the open anymore and and we really have seen a very big reduction in not seeing the little sugar ants so those guys are ruthless that's all I can say so that's kind of an update of me and Sherry and what we're working on and working with Aaron Jemerson from Three Tails RV it's been very helpful and we appreciate it so hopefully you'll be hearing his voice and seeing his pretty little face a little more too with us so that's your update I'm going to take this section of the show to talk about a little bit of business and fun stuff. So I'm going to tell you a secret. Uh, if if you're actually listening to the show I and mean, you're hearing this show right now, um, when this launches, which will be uh, Monday, uh, let's see, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16th, I believe, 16th of uh, May, for oh the first five ten people that go to RV Talk Radio and go to the contact page and shoot us a little note, tell us uh, how it would help us and help you or help us is what we're doing a shout out is here's my here's my concern or or, or what I I just keep noticing so. We meet people all the time. We're at the RV park. We always meet somebody new, people coming and going. And it's amazing how many people have not heard of us or heard of other people like us, like Gone with the Winds or Freedom Theory or Spot the Scots or RV Travel Buddy or Caravan 
such and such and happily houseless and things like that. They just don't, or even RV travel or RV education or <laughs> any of those guys. They just really, I've never heard of that before. You know, and they might have looked at videos and only because they had a reason to be looking for a particular subject, but they're not like regular listeners and things. So we tell, you know, we'll tell somebody, oh, we have RV Talk Radio and RV Travel Buddy. And they go, wow, that's really cool how to get connected and all that. So it's like, obviously, that conventional advertising, you know, we could be on Facebook and all this stuff, all we want. And uh, I'm afraid that even, um, and once we find these people and we kind of explain to them how they could find us either on YouTube or listen to a podcast or and along with any other people, not just us. And we're actually a very open community. It's not like we tell people, you have to listen to us and that's all. There's lots of great platforms out there and some are much better than we are. And uh, so we work with the community. We will pass them either on to you or whatever. But we at least would like to ask you to try to pass people on to us through RV Travel Buddy, RV Travel Quest, RV Talk Radio, and now the new outdoortravelradio.com so the way we could kind of start that is if I got some more stickers out to people that would put them on their windows or bumpers that would help kind of get the word out that there's a such a show as RV Talk Radio and yes we are growing and we uh, and we've just actually hit some really good milestones with uh, the podcast and we're just tickled pink and but uh, just for overall because you know we talk about other channels and shows here and send them off to you too so we need your help and the way one way you can do it is maybe uh get you know order one of our stickers or i'm going to give some away so i'm going to give away maybe five to ten and and i always say i'm going to say five but sometimes i get so many good stories i just can't help but give out more <coughs> so if you go to rvtalkradio.com go to the contact page tell us how you how you would help us <laughs> i guess what you like about our channel what and things maybe you'd like to see us do better on but also leave and remember our news uh that email is private nobody's going to see it nor do we sell information or give it away if you want a sticker and you give us a little bit of information of how you'd use that sticker and maybe um what you like about our channel and what we're doing right um, leave us your address and we will send you a free RV Talk Radio window sticker and they're awesome they're clean very professional looking and good quality uh, I don't have a whole lot of them right now but I can order more if I, but at least for now I'll give away five to ten free ones just by going to our site and communicating with us and and offering to help so we appreciate that uh, the other thing is don't hesitate just to send us notes we love talking to you guys and in some cases we've actually even called people up and said really tell me more um, so please uh, you can also email me directly at Rob at RV talk radio and eventually I'll set one up for Aaron too and Aaron to have his own email so anyway uh, <laughs> please don't hesitate and so the other thing that you probably some a lot of folks that follow us already have noticed we created two new Facebook pages, not groups, but Facebook pages for the two radio stations. So RV Talk Radio now has their own Facebook page, and OutdoorTravelRadio.com has its own Facebook page. So go visit them, leave some posts, and and uh, uh, leave us your stories and post some pictures. We'd love to hear from you. So. And you can also talk to us one-on-one -on -one through the message button at the top. Which brings me to the point of just saying I'm grateful. So many people have sent us a lot of information, good stuff. And then we also get uh, what I call constructive feedback, which is always great. Um, allows us to streamline the shows a little more. We uh, are very human, down-to-earth people. Sherry and I are just like you. Um, and so... We try not to build us up as something special. We just, uh, you know, we have a, a regular sh show here. We do work hard. Now that I'm retired, I'm actually working harder than I ever have. <laughs> it's like something's wrong there. Anyway, 
uh, hopefully we're do, we're good people. We pass on, and we're not. Uh, we don't look in a mirror and go, man, we're awesome. We like to share the community, support others. And uh, if you're new or if you got something that you need some help too, the, we do have our platforms growing quite a bit. We're out to help people too, but we're also cautious because we've actually been burned a little bit. Um, back, you know, We've helped a lot of folks when they first started, and then it's amazing when they go off and start doing real well, they leave us in the dust. <laughs> it's like, okay, we can see how that relationship was. We're looking for friends and community and folks that would constantly work together. And uh, we are finding those kind of people. And occasionally, so we are a little um, cautious at first when we first meet folks. But as we go, uh, um, more and more, we'll kind of uh, open our arms up and say, hey, come on board and see if we can uh, work together on some projects. So anyway, get them stickers, guys. And let's move on to another subject. This part of the show is kind of talking from the heart a little. So there's a funny little reality kind of happening with Sherry and I. Uh, you know, Sherry and I are, you know, and we've been no secret about it, that we we're 55 and we're both the same age. And as we get older, obviously folks we know get older. And then, of course, we've had a lot of, you know, people a generation ahead of us that are really good friends of ours that, that were our coaches and our friends. And... And so they're getting up in age, and so what we're starting to witness, and uh, some people can relate to this, is uh, you know health issues from from our friends, and some passings, uh, possibly you know in the future coming up and things. And it's kind of keeps me reminding, because you know, like I have a sister that's ten years older than me, and so <laughs> she'll probably outlive me anyway, but. I think the most important thing I'd want to pass on to anybody is if one of those people were to leave today permanently this beautiful earth would you have any regrets of things that you didn't get a chance to say or do for that person that's my message is if there's someone you kind of been having uh, difficulties talking or you kind of like standoffish a little bit close your eyes for a couple of minutes think that through and say what if that person instantly disappeared how many you know whether it's a friend or a relative or a close person did you say the, the things you wanted to say before they're gone and so I guess I'd be more of living for the now but is there somebody you love that you probably need to tell them you love them? Is there someone that you need to let them know you care and, and have always, always cared for them? Have you told them that? Do they know that? Um, is there just some people that you've lost touch with but you kind of just wish you were but just haven't taken the time to make that phone call? And with today's technology between phone calls, texting, uh, uh, Skype, things like that, really, we don't have very good excuses. So, my this is my Rob talking from the heart, is it could happen to anyone, even your own wife or partner, right? Is, is Are you saying you love them? Are you giving them that kiss at night? Uh, your children, are you always telling them how much you care and how proud you are of them? And live each day like you may lose each other the next day so I don't know maybe I don't mean to be so sentimental but it, sometimes we need to be reminded folks just to stop smell the roses let other people know how much we care about them so do that get on that phone contact that person tell that person you like them or, or you're caring or you're thinking about them tell your partner or spouse you love them and don't have any regrets wow so you're looking for a bargain when you're RVing and that's great and we all like a good deal we also like to save money and things like that but 
I got to bring this one subject up and it's just food for thought. And it's not taking one side or the other, but it kind of concerns me. So uh, between shows here and stuff, uh, I'll get on the internet, check all the subscriptions, see what kind of shows are coming through. And, and the particular day I'm looking, it's like two or three people are all talking about boondocking, free camping, uh, places to stealth camp. And and that's great, I guess. But it's a little concerning. One is people talk about, wow, I want the RV freedom. I want to be <laughs> off the grid. The you know, thing that concerns me about that, especially if there's new RVers, they're just like so eager to get out there to get free camping and find places to stealth camp. And, and, and uh, there's even sites out there that hook you up with people that have property where you can go stay on your site. And so what I'm asking is, how safe is all that? Uh, in some places like boondocking, like down here on BLM land, there's still, you know, five, six, seven rigs that are kind of all spread out. And so you kind of have a little bit of a community. But, you know, just to pull over on the side of the road, like I, there's like, um, I watched one folks that, uh, that heard that boondocking in Coos Bay was bad. And so, and something happened. Well, what about all the stories we haven't heard about? So I would like to put out there a little bit that all this um, freedom on the, in an RV can, I mean, even with RV parks, can be 50% or better savings than owning or renting a house. I, that's We pretty much all know that. And yeah... Um, if you're working with RV parks that have a membership and stuff, now that's a great way to save money. Like Thousand Trails, you can get a membership where you work out the situation where you can actually get some free places to stay or as little as $3 a day. That's awesome. But this RV freedom, let's boondocks and always save money. How nutty can that get? How overboard can you get about that? to the point that you're putting your spouse or partner in a non-safe situation. What would you do if you're on the side of a road that you're spending the night out in a strange area and someone knocks on your door, opens it, and there you go with a gun in your face? There's no one to scream or hear to or they're just going to do what they want to do. And you're really setting yourself up for, and I, and I know you could be packing, you could have uh, pepper spray, but you know how that goes. It's probably you, you didn't have a chance to reach for it. And uh, if you used it, it could actually be turned on you. So I don't know, safety kind of comes to mind when I think about all this boondocking uh, advertising going on. That Oh, go out and save some big money. I don't know. RV freedom to me is is one is trying to reduce our cost, but at the same time, you know, there's some amenities that, you know, we're not in a third world country. So having electricity and having hookups and and maybe if you don't have a satellite, uh, at least a cable hookup, a place uh, for recreation like swimming pools or hot tubs and a clean place to go take a shower and get your laundry done and pay between four to eight hundred dollars a month does not you know and then based on your budget if you need to stay in the 400 a month type of realm go for a different type of rv park just like housing if you want a house that doesn't cost 400 500 thousand you go out to the outskirts and you find out you can get a house uh, for half that price and still have a nice house you mean you have to give and take but to just be so eager to spend a night in a Walmart parking lot or on the side of a road or down a dirt road, uh, I, I don't know. I, it's a little concerning to see so much of that kind of woohoo, go out, save money, boondocking, stealth camping. The whole thing is like maybe it's fine if you're alone, but actually to me that sounds even worse. But... 
What about your partner? You may be enthusiastic about saving money, but what about saving lives? Anyway, food for thought. Just thought I'd bring that up. Um, I'm not taking one side or the other. I just say, know that most RVers are not all that interested in boondocking unless it's like a, you know, like a park or something like that. And when you're boondocking, you're not really alone. There's another RV probably, you know, a quarter mile away. There's a community. It doesn't hurt to talk to each other. Just kind of say, hey, we're in the area. How are you? That's not like being alone. That kind of boondocking is not bad. Uh, but there is ways to really save your money through different memberships and things like that. But please, guys, be careful. Just please be careful. So shifting gears a little bit to define, at least for Sherry and I, what RV, <laughs> RV freedom is all about. So I think there's probably two main things. One is RV freedom is a lower overhead in certain circumstances. Uh, and but it's also more work because it's, you got a lot of tasks that you have to do to maintain an RV. But the other main RV freedom is, is and you don't have to put the letters RV in front of it. If you want freedom and true freedom, you know what it is. You don't want to hear it and it's hard. You want to fix things now. Because, you know, the new generation is a now generation. But freedom, RV freedom, the true definition is get out of debt. Yeah, that's it. Simple as that. Sounds really easy, doesn't it? <laughs> get out of debt. It takes work and takes planning. And that's a lot of things I see probably with it's a generational thing but you know uh, everybody wants things now or well, if you got kind of a mess to clean up you need a plan you need to give yourself time even though you want it now and the freedom you're really looking for isn't going to come from boondocking or living in uh, uh, Walmart parking lots and, and trying to get uh, stealth camping and all that what you need to do is be out of debt and everybody has different ratios of that and then there's also you know people's lives are you know can you can't imagine how you know and and, and the other thing is the young generation that's gone to school and got degrees they're facing the student loan thing and that's a nightmare and you can't just walk away from that that's like a guaranteed loan it's like um, the IRS if you owe them money I don't care what you do, even as far as a bankruptcy, you still have to pay. So there's no running away from that. So planning, uh, getting out of debt, before you do this RV freedom, if you truly want RV freedom, you need to be out of debt as much as possible. Now, uh, the other thing is, you know, you want to keep your credit up and things like that. But also, uh, uh, some things like Sherry and I, we still f have one thing that we finance. <laughs> and to us, it's the RV. And it's because, if let's, let's just play with a number. Let's say you buy a RV fifth wheel for $90,000. We'll talk about new one. Well, of course, what happens when you drive off the lot? It depreciates it. Well, so I'll still buy. I'll buy a used one. Okay, so that knocks that knocks it down by twenty thousand. So you get it for seventy thousand dollars. Do you think that's going to help? No. So it's going to drop ten, twenty thousand dollars every year. So if you're making, you buy a rig like that, and you maybe put five, ten thousand down or whatever. Let's say your payments come out to be five, six, seven hundred a month. Okay. Well. If, if it's $500 a month you're paying and you pay that for a whole year, that's $6,000. Well, <laughs> is your rig going to depreciate $6,000 or more every year? And I'd say it's probably going to be more. 
And are you going to want to trade your rig in after two, three, or four years? Well, in our case, Sherry and I, we tend to like newer rigs and more dependable. So why would I want to just put $90,000 of pure cash down and that I work so hard to have and I need for emergencies, especially at our age, we could have a medical emergency and stuff. Um, or is it better for me just to finance and pay 6000 a year for, I hope I said that right, um, a year for my RV. So that is the choice we've made to use financing the way uh, that makes sense to us. Because it'd be nice if we had a rig uh, that was paid for in full, but um, it all depends on you know how handy you are or how often you want to work on your rig. And the other thing is RV parks and stuff tend to want people to have rigs that are 10 years old, uh, no more than 10 years old. And and they make exceptions to that. Good looking rigs can get in. It's not that big a deal. But anyway, so RV freedom, get out of debt. And if you have any debt, make it measured debt. And if you use credit cards, you pay them off, but have good credit rating. But if you really want freedom, um, and you want to do work camping and make it so to make 12 bucks an hour work camping or doing something like that it truly is extra income if you don't have debt so uh, just food for thought I know it sounds kind of cruel but I'm telling you that before you come out here and be an RVer and you want that RV freedom if you really want freedom spend the next one or two years really grinding on your debt and also getting rid of extra stuff you don't need because you're going to have to downsize anyway. And learn to live with minimal and you'll be happy. Do you know, just to take it even farther, the more stuff you have, the more responsibility you have. That means you're responsible for that stuff. So if you reduce your stuff, will that take away stress? And the answer is, yeah, it will. It's hard to believe, but you will feel so much better when you get rid of all that stuff and you don't have to be responsible for it. So, RV freedom. Get rid of the stuff. Get out of debt. Plan. And then you would truly be living RD, RV freedom and enjoying life stress-free. So do you want to know a way to get under your uh, wife's skin <laughs> and my daughter? It's both of those guys that I've told you this before. I've got those Fitbits. And this is the next generation of us. They're kind of fancy. And they have a website and they're challenging each other for drinking water and how many steps a day and all that stuff. And you can do it online. So that's all I know about it. And it's driving me crazy. It's like Sherry gets home from work. I want to chill and maybe split a beer with her or something. And she says, I get, I'm being challenged by my daughter. I've got to walk 3,000 more steps today or she's going to beat me. And, I, and it's like, oh, God. <laughs> it's like, and, and, and then the water. Oh, water, water, water. So I, the good news is, is I told you guys that, you know, Sherry's one of, Sherry likes to drink Coca-Cola uh, or Coke. And I don't want to say Coke because people go, oh, she drugs <laughs> it's like no coca-cola pop soda so anyway and why is it the people on the west coast call it pop and the people on the east coast like to call it soda i don't get it so anyway so we're getting back to the, the subject is so uh sherry immediately changes her clothes and um sometimes we'll start cooking uh, if it's something i can cook with a hood out i've already started something whatever but anyway but well, you know what? We got to go for a walk, and it's not because we want to go for a walk hand in hand and stroll and watch the sunset. It's because she needs to beat her daughter, and the water. We drink. I can't. We're really going through the water. <clears throat> trying to do sixty. I'm not. Sixty-four ounces of water a day. So to me, that would be full time in the restroom. <laughs> That's just too much water for me. So anyway, so what's funny about this whole thing is. I've lost like 12 pounds 
and I'm not doing a darn thing hardly. I am going on the walks with her once in a while and stuff, but uh, since she's working, I'm working, and then I'm not. Uh, I tend to eat a little bit more square meals. It's like I'm hungry. Oh, I better get breakfast. Oh, I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. I eat a lunchtime thing, and then dinner comes. We try to cook something decent, and uh, we are getting away from the red meat. I don't know, but. I'm not trying real hard, and I, I should. I'm not saying that's <laughs> what I'm doing is right. But I'm the one benefiting from this whole thing. <laughs> and so, shh, don't tell anybody. And I didn't need a Fitbit to do it. So anyway, it's kind of funny, but uh, the girls are frustrated. Especially, it's like, and, they, and every time I complain, like, God, do we have to walk? Can't we just enjoy the evening? And my wife will come back now and says, well, you're the one benefiting, so, <laughs> so I can't win the argument. But so the Fitbits, I gotta admit, are, are are a good tool. I just don't want one of my own. I'll just kind of work through my wife. But anyway, because she'll drive me crazy. Like, how many steps did you do today? I don't want to tell her. Just like, I don't want to know if I have high cholesterol. I know it sounds silly, but if I did, then I'd worry about it. But I do know what causes it, so I try not to eat that way. And and and. Uh, I, there's just some information you just don't need to know yet. Well, it's getting to the end of our show, and I want to thank you so much for listening. It's been a real fun week. Everybody's working hard, trying to get all kinds of new stuff going, We're trying to get our our rhythm and all this stuff uh, on the new radio show. Bear with us. The sh- the, scheduling the platform will be constantly changing as it grows into a lot of new material and of course you can hear this show on outdoor travel radio Uh, and sometimes we load this show earlier than the monday show so that's one of the privileges of uh, listening to the 24 7 radio station anyway we want everybody to be safe out there we're grateful for all of our new listeners we're growing and, and hitting new milestones and it's thanks to you. And don't forget that little, if you listen to the show closer, that you can get some free stickers. We told you how. So you got to go back and listen again. <laughs> so, and yes, let your wife buy the Fitbit and you just kind of follow along. You'll lose weight, guys. <laughs> anyway, once again, I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you next Monday. Be safe. I've said that already, I know, but you can never be safe enough. So once again, take care, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.